Right, so I wanted to talk real briefly about the Peter Pan and Wendy trailer. Um, I, I just saw this, and honestly, even with the... <laughs> even with things routinely disappointing me, I am a little shocked at how bad this looks. Uh, Disney has been remaking all of its classic animated films, and sometimes this has gone reasonably well. A lot of the time it's gone pretty badly, and quite frankly, I am not up to date on all of them. I, I sort of gave up. I didn't see the Lion King version. Uh, it's not, you know, I guess kind of after The Jungle Book, where it's not really live action, it's mostly CGI, and that at least has a human, you know, at least... Uh, Mowgli is human. Well, the, the Lion King is not even, there's no, it's, it's just all CGI. How is that a live action remake? Um, I just, I don't know. I didn't see Dumbo. I, I've sort of given up on the Disney live action remakes. Mulan was really bad. Um, out of all of them, I really only liked Beauty and the Beast, and it's still not as good as the cartoon. The animated Beauty and the Beast is maybe the best Disney animated movie ever made. Uh, you can't top it. But they did an alright job, at least. A lot of these have been pretty disappointing. Uh, and this one, Peter Pan and Wendy, oh boy, uh, this this might just take the cake, if the trailer is any indication. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the original Peter Pan animated movie isn't perfect. Uh, it's, 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 in some ways it's great, right? It's colorful, it's adventurous, it's lighthearted, you know, it's, it very, very much captures the spirit of the book. Uh, probably my only real complaint with that film is the presentation of Native Americans in that film. Oh. Oh, ha -ha, oh. For many moons, red man fight pale face lost boys. Oh, oh. Sometime you win, sometime we win. Uh, even when I was a kid, I, rem I remember this very distinctly. I was watching this movie at my grandparents' house. They had a, an awesome basement TV room area. And I, was, I think I was with some cousins of a big, big family, um, extended family. My mom walked in, and I think it was during, yeah, it was during that scene where they're singing the song, Why is the Red Man Red? And she just shook her head and said, this is so racist. And I hadn't really thought about it. I was just a kid. But then it occurred to me, you know, that yes, this is actually a pretty, you know, bad way of presenting, of representing Native American people. Of course, you know, my mom's conservative Catholic woman, uh, <laughs> far as far from like the, the, you know, woke leftist as you can imagine. Um, although I think... You'd be surprised at the crossover and the overlap between uh, Catholics and peaceniks and all the rest. But, um, you know, we lived in Montana at the time, and there was a lot of Native American people there. Um, and I think that, you know, that is a problematic point in that movie. And any remake of, of that movie should ditch the racism, right? And I don't think it was like intentionally racist or trying to be horrible to native people but it was obviously you know that this is a sign of the times right <clears throat> and we can do better than that now what what unfortunately has happened though is that we've gone <clears throat> we've taken this concept of like well we're going to do better than we did back in the 50s and we've run with it way too far in the other direction right so so if you look at the 90s uh, version of Peter Pan, it was Hook with Robin Williams and uh, Dustin Hoffman and Julia Roberts. And that's a wonderful movie. I, I know some people think it's terrible and it didn't get the best reviews, but I love Hook. Uh, Hook is right there with Willow and some other movies from my childhood that are just, I, that I can watch over and over and over again. And I find them so wonderful every single time. And I love Robin Williams in this movie. I love Dustin Hoffman. He's so funny as Captain Hook, uh, and Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell. I don't know. It, it all works for me, and, and that may be just because I grew up then, but I love Hook. And one one striking thing about that is that the Lost Boys in Hook are actually quite diverse. We've got, we've got uh, a number of black Lost Boys. You've got Rufio, who's Asian. Uh, you have a diversity in this movie, and it just doesn't feel forced. 
This is one thing I love about Hook and about the 90s in general. As things became more diverse and we we, had, we started having more representation for, for you know, gay people and minorities and all the rest, uh, a lot of the time it just felt very natural, or at least in retrospect it seems natural, compared to what we see now. Now in this trailer for Peter Pan and Wendy, we have uh, the Lost Boys again, very diverse, fine, but when when Wendy shows up, she's you know she's like introduced to the Lost Boys. This guy says, I, "We're the Lost Boys," and she says, "But not all of you are boys." And the, these two little girls in the Lost Boys say, "So what?" It it feels like the trailer, and in this point and in another point, is essentially poking at people who are going to critique this trailer. It's like they wrote it into the script, very much like She-Hulk, where they're like, we're going to anticipate the backlash and we're going to just be very blatant about it. We're going to, we're going to shoot first. Uh, it, but here's the thing. Here's the problem. Uh, the Lost Boys were boys for a reason. I mean, not only is that written into the story, Peter Pan explains that these these boys all fell out of their... their strollers and were whisked off to Neverland and that girls are much too clever to to fall out of their strollers okay so that's part of it right it's 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 worked into the story there's an explanation and it's actually sort of female empowering but also Wendy herself is unique in that she is a girl in Neverland and there aren't any others other than Tinkerbell right other than the fairies there there are no girls in Neverland right the, the pirates are all men the Lost Boys are all boys, and the presence of Wendy is is a big deal because of that. She becomes not only a mother figure to the Lost Boys, but uh, a source of, of, of fascination for Peter Pan specifically. And ultimately, Wendy is the one who has the courage to grow up and who has the courage to, to realize that, you know, I mean, this is her conflict at home, right, is that she's being, she's, she's almost grown up and she's terrified of this. And Neverland is her, it's her story, right? It is Wendy's story. It's her story of going to this place where you don't have to. And realizing through the adventure she goes on there with Peter Pan that she must. And having the courage to do that. And that's not easy. That's, that's difficult for all of us. Um, and there's that time in life when you do transition from being a child to an adult. And it's not a clear dividing line but a story like Peter Pan helps us helps us take that journey, helps children understand that growing up is scary, but that it's okay, and that it takes some courage, but that's okay. And Wendy is such an important, strong female character, uh, not because she can fight or because she's a badass or whatever, but because she has that uh, ability to transcend that, that, that dividing line and to leave Neverland. Uh, and to inspire others, to to lead the way. Um, the story is Peter Pan, but but in lots of ways, it is a story of, of Wendy. Um, you don't actually modernize that story by pretending like you're, you're doing something making this Wendy story when it already was, or by, you know, adding girls to the Lost Boys and missing the whole point. Uh, we enter somewhat trickier territory when we talk about Peter Pan himself. And once again in this trailer, when Peter Pan shows up, he says, uh, not what you were expecting. And this is another thumb in the eye of people who will criticize this trailer to, to, to preemptively cast them as bigots because Peter Pan is not white. Peter Pan is East Indian. Uh, I don't really have a problem with this. I have a problem with the way it's presented by Disney in this trailer in an, it, it's an antagonistic, it's, it's, it's just like out the gates antagonism with the fan, the fan base. Um, I, <clears throat> I don't really have a problem with Peter Pan not being white. I do think, just judging from the trailer, I don't particularly care for this exact casting choice. Uh, nothing in the trailer makes me think, ah, that's Peter Pan. You need a very puckish character for, for Peter Pan. And it just, I don't know, the kid they got just doesn't work for me. Uh, which has nothing to do with his race. However, I will say that race swapping only goes so far when it comes to like representation and diversity. 
Uh, you ha- this is a distinctly English story about a specific time when there wasn't a lot of diversity, right? There just wasn't in England. There was some, obviously, but English empire, you know, ultimately led to the multiculturalism that we see now in, in, in England and in, in the UK. But, you know, when, when, <laughs> when this story was written, when Peter Pan was conceived, that, you know, England wasn't as diverse, and Peter Pan was obviously a, a white kid. Now, again, I love Hook. I love that they, they have a more diverse Lost Boys. I'm totally fine with race swapping Peter Pan, but I also think it's important to remember that race swapping does not equal true diversity. You, you, it, at the most cynical, it represents a sort of corporate diversity or diversity ink, uh, which is tokenistic and box checking at, at its core. It's rather than telling any kind of, you know, like there are stories to be told about Indians in the UK, Indian immigrants or, or, or second or third or fourth generation Indians growing up in the UK, uh, you know, and, and what that means, what it means to be an immigrant or for the child of immigrants, what it means to come from a different culture. There's all kinds of stories to tell within that context. Just race swapping Peter Pan does not actually tell any of those stories or, or really add to diverse storytelling. It just makes Peter Pan not white. Uh, and, and as we get into a, an era where it's not just like in the Hook days when, you know, having the Lost Boys be diverse, which just sort of felt natural... Now it feels very much more like, okay, we are, we know, we need to have, we need to have girls in the Lost Boys, we need to have a member of every race we can think of in the Lost Boys, you know, we need to have Peter Pan be, not be white in this, and we're, it almost feels like, you know, it feels like pandering, and it feels disingenuous. Uh, even Tinkerbell, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm someone who has said that I don't, I don't care that they made the, the Little Mermaid black. I don't. Mermaids are a fantasy creature. There's nothing particularly white about them. You know, Hans Christian Andersen told this folk tale of the Little Mermaid, but but they're you know mermaids just like dragons or any other creature. You know, they have their their roots in all kinds of uh, fables and different cultures, and I just don't care that much. I do, however, think that once again in all of these stories, that simply. Uh, Simply race swapping is not the best solution. On the other hand, you you make a movie like the the Princess and the Frog, which which actually delves into like Southern Black culture and like the Bayou and all that stuff. Or you have Aladdin and and you know there are all these stories to be told from different cultures. You don't I don't think leaning on race swapping or leaning on tokenistic diversity is the right way forward when you have you know, you could just not drop the ball in Mulan, right? You could, you can find other stories to tell, um, you know, tell, you know, there's so, there's so many stories out there. And I know they're just, they're, they're going through this remake, remake all the animated into live action. Uh, and, and this, so they're, they're limited in their choices, of course, but these, these, you know, I think we have to just question that whole project, which feels cynical and money-making also. And so this gets to like my title of this video, uh, the useful idiots of diversity, which, um, might sound a little rude or something. I don't know, but, uh, basically, you know, the people who are championing this stuff, the people who are pushing this stuff in a lot of ways, you know, it's like the, it's like the video of these, of these, uh, you know, minorities that, that Amazon took interviewing them about the diversity in the rings of power and, and they're being, they're so excited about the diversity in rings of power. And it's like, you guys are just marketing for, for Amazon. Like they're just using you like, because you're a minority, they're using you for their marketing and they're using that to sell this show. Uh, and all the people who, you know, who are, you know, excited about this stuff, it's like you're just promoting the most generic, tokenistic, corporate form of diversity imaginable rather than, you know, actually championing anything meaningful. And of course, again, like, I, I am not, like, just 
always going to oppose any sort of race swapping or this kind. I thought the Green Knight was fantastic, and and that absolutely, you know, just puts Indian actors in a story about you know medieval Britain, uh, and it works. It works fine, and it's not really like shove. It's not really like they're they're shoving it in your face or making you like 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 this aggressive marketing that we see from Disney or from Amazon or from some of these places that we've seen recently. Uh, the final thing I'm going to say about this trailer is that once again, it appears that Disney hates. Well, they want a more colorful cast. They hate actual color in their films um, and light. Color and light appear to be. Uh, just not welcome anymore in Disney live action films. There, there is this Neverland looks like a wasteland. Like, why would you want to go there? It's grim and colorless and lifeless and inert. It's just what happened to the color? Like, why don't? Why isn't this a a vibrant, saturated world of green, verdant forests and 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 blue, you know, cerulean skies and turquoise waters. And, you know, like this is supposed to be like a, a Caribbean adjacent fairy tale island, basically. And, you know, that should be really colorful. It What happened with all these films that they make them so boring and bland? Anyways, this looks absolutely dog shit. This movie looks very, very, very bad. Uh, fortunately, there are many other versions of Peter Pan out there. We can just go back and watch Hook. Uh, it's in the, um, you know, we can make our own versions of Peter Pan if we so choose, because it is in the, it is no longer under copyright protection. So you can go and you can, you can do whatever you want with the IP. Uh, Disney just has capitalized on it, but it sure as shit isn't theirs. So uh, yeah, thank God for that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Shh. Let me know what you thought of this trailer in the comments. Peace.